Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe, in part two of my buildup of the Polar Lights 1350 scale Enterprise uh, from the original series, the TOS, the Big Mama. Now, um, if you're just joining me, uh, welcome. But there was a, 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 a first part to this, uh, which explained why I'm building this kit and why you should care. Uh, but just to recap for those of you um, who don't want to go back and check it out, but I do encourage you to do that. It, uh, it, there, there was a, there's a myriad of reasons, but uh, mostly, you know, I've built this kit a couple of times in the past. Um, and over the years, uh, I've given them away. I, 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 people admire them and I've given them as gifts and I, and I wasn't that big into, uh, building a personal collection. Uh, now I am. And so, um, this is one of those kits you just have to have, you have to have it. And so that was one of the wheels that started turning. The other wheel that started turning was that, you know, in my journey through, through YouTube, uh, there is many, many different modelers that I watch, uh, admire, uh, and subscribe to their channels. And it dawned on me that there have been so many uh, buildups of this kit that I thought to myself, why not? Because uh, as a lot of you know, who watch me on a regular basis, I talk about uh, this channel being um, a little bit of a, uh, a test kitchen. And uh, more importantly, I realized that all those buildups are an incredible wealth of information. So much uh, skill and, 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 and figuring stuff out has gone into all of those builds. And, and sometimes you, you come across a video where they made a bunch of mistakes, Mia Copa, they showed you how they fixed them or they realize, you know, you realize. And so you have this, this, this incredible amount of wealth. You also have a whole bunch of other things. Uh, how glue has improved over the years. Putties have improved over the years. Uh, you've got, obviously, you've got photo etch from power graphics. You've got aftermarket th uh, uh, printed parts, great resin 3D printed parts uh, with incredible amounts of detail to, to swap out for various things. And, I've, I, 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 and so I, I looked at all of that body of stuff and how you paint these and approaches to painting it and approaches to lighting it. And I thought to myself, you know what, with all of that information how could you not attack this kit and say let's give it a try and so uh that's what we're doing here uh we're giving it the good old college try and i'm and i'm thrilled to be doing it and i have to say it's given me an awful lot of confidence to be doing this now than i uh, than i had when i first attacked it because you know uh, there's so many different things that you got to learn and figure out and you know um uh, for the skilled hobbyists, they're obvious. For the rest of us, uh, you know, we learn as we go along, right? And we just want to get better and better. So um, <clears throat> having said all of that, here we are in uh, the second part, but I guess the full-blown update. Um, so to start with, with this kit, I'm lighting it. Um, and I have made a decision to go with the Polar Lights uh, aftermarket uh, model uh, lighting kit. Um, it's not cheap, uh, but it does allow you to light all of the windows. And so um, that's what I'm going to be using for that. I'm going to be using um, a combination of the Tena Controls um, Bassard uh, lighting effect and uh, some, of their, uh, some of the other um, LEDs for strobes and that sort of thing, because I really like uh, Ralph's board. I think it's, it, it's really great. Um, and now that board will live in my base and I've uh, shared with you a sneak preview of the base that I'm using on my Instagram account at Spruver. So you can go check that out there. We'll be revealing it on the channel here uh, at an up a later date. But if you want to see the base now in all of its glory, um, I've got uh, a, uh, a complete episode uh, that I did last year um, where I actually uh, break this base down and show you what comes with it. Um, and it's from a company called Ridge Tech Solutions, Ridge Tech Solutions. And um, <clears throat> the gentleman over there, Tom, um, is is he's just uh, absolutely amazing. And uh, you can get uh, you can get this base 
uh, by emailing Tom, T-O-M, at RidgeTechSolutions.com. Here, I'll show you. I'll put the card here so you can see it. That's where the base comes from. And he's got amazing bases, so certainly go and check him out. Um, but that's the base I'm going to be using, and Ralph's board will live in that base. And the two PC boards that come with the lighting kit will obviously live in the model itself. One is in the saucer, and that jumps to a second one that lives in the hull. And then that'll all get powered down the rod uh, that attaches the base to the model to my base. And we'll be off to the races. And I've got a few other uh, fun things I'm going to be doing with the base as well to trick it out and give it that kind of 60s feel. But we'll talk about that in a, in a later episode. Uh, but for today, uh, just to sort of uh, recap with where we are, um, uh, everything has gotten your traditional black um, uh, light blocking coat and then over that is the uh, white for reflection because we're obviously lighting this and then on the exterior uh, it got a light sanding with uh, a 600 grit uh, wet sand uh, paper and uh, and then I gave uh, it uh, everything a coat of the uh, Duplo filler primer and um, <clears throat> So that went on really well. And then you rub it, you know, you get that sort of grittiness, that little bit of grittiness that comes with these filler primers uh, because uh, that tells you they're doing their job. I mean, I, I dusted it on with light coats, but you get that kind of grittiness because um, that's how it fills in all of those little cracks. Um, and so uh, we'll be now, um, this is fully dried. Uh, today I'll be taking this down a little bit with some 600 and then I'll be hitting it with a second coat of primer, probably a Mr. Hobby 1200 surface, Mr. Surfacer 1200, something like that, uh, to get this really smooth and ready for, for paint paint. Now, um, uh, and I've done that to all of these surfaces. Uh, now, when it comes to paint paint, um, I think it's very uh, funny, uh, but here's the, the raw plastic. Now, everything came in this color. And uh, what I showed you from uh, my previous episode was uh, this pretty cool uh, chart that they give you. It's quite impressive. Um, and um, <clears throat> it lays out all the colors that you'll need. But curiously, what I thought was fun was the fact that when it came to the actual color of, of, of this ship, it does say, uh, refer to the, you know, the, the plastic color. Um, and, uh, you know, and obviously uh, to the eye, it looks uh, like a, a, a sort of a, a green, a drabby green, but it's actually a gray green. And, the, you know, that's one of the genius things about obviously having all this time gone by uh, because uh, the Smithsonian has the quintessential uh, Holy Grail, the Enterprise, the 11 foot filming miniature, which they have restored lovingly. And I'm going to get to see it with uh, my dear friend Wayne over at World of Wayne. We're going to uh, hook up in Washington, D.C. before Wonderfest, and then we're going to go on a pilgrimage, uh, and then we'll end up at, uh, at Wonderfest. So I'm super, super excited about that, but we'll get to see this thing in all of its glory. But um, what you do realize is that um, it, it, it is definitely uh, a different animal than you, than you think. Uh, let me show you. Uh, I have got up on the screen here this is the uh, 11 foot filming, filming miniature. This is taken from the Smithsonian website. This is one of the restoration photos. And what you'll notice on this is how heavy the weathering is. I mean, look at, look at all of that around the doors to the hangar bay and the, the, fail, the tail fan, the fail tan, the tail fan. Um, how heavy the, uh, that, that distressing is. Um, now, uh, Obviously, that was because in the 60s when they filmed, um, they filmed on either a 16 or 35 millimeter with lots of, you know, very hot studio lights with gels and all of that. And under the lighting conditions, a lot of, a, a lot of that uh, will just disappear because of the softness of film. That was the genius of film. And so they, you know, that's why they did what they did. But I want 
a accurate representation of that filming miniature uh, with all of its warts. And so I'm going to actually be putting my weathering on just a little heavier to kind of mimic that because that's what I'm going for. I'm going to use that 11 foot miniature to do everything that I do in terms of um, how it should look, color and that sort of a thing. Uh, they did a fantastic job on the restoration and the details and the explanations are fantastic. So, you know, you no longer have to rely on box art. You no longer have to rely on uh, frame grabs. You can just simply um, <coughs> follow along. Um, so that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> now, so, um, and uh, I'll be mixing my colors from Tamiya paint. And um, I've, uh, I'm going to be using their JN Gray, which has green in it with a gray. Um, and I'm going to get my mix as close as I can to the filming miniature color. And so that's what we'll be doing with paint. Um, I am taking everything off the sprues uh, and I'm cleaning it all up. Uh, and then everything will get primed and painted, um, and, and the, 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 the smaller parts will be left as, uh, aside, obviously, to be added at a later date. Um, but uh, a couple of other things um, I did want to talk about, which was um, uh, I'm going to be building this, obviously, in sub-assemblies. That's what they want you to do. That's what you're supposed to do. So the actual hull uh, with the pylons and the neck will be one sub-assembly. And then the saucer will be another, and obviously the nacelles will be the third sub-assembly. And everything will go off of that. Uh, so step one is to take care of this uh, hull. And um, <clears throat> I know, uh, it, you know, it's sort of uh, welcome to the university of the bloody obvious, but that's a big part of why I'm making this video, is the old me, would have been very careful to actually not get any putty in these holes. So I would have tried to avoid puttying them. And when you do that, um, you are liable to start to lose some of the, the putty uh, on the edges and you won't get a perfect seam. What I've learned to do is putty the whole bloody thing. Now I'll put some silly putty behind here, uh, uh, this piece at the end, the, on the tail, um, because I don't want any large chunks or anything dropping, uh, dropping into uh, the, the model, um, even though everything will be uh, covered up um, and protected. Uh, but that, what that will allow me to do is sand this down and get this nice and smooth and um, when I'm done, I'm going to be able to drill out these holes uh, cleanly. And uh, my trusted pin vise has the perfect size drill bit. I'm sure all of you have this in your kits. And um, this will obviously be clean because it will have um, some, uh, some putty on it. So, so that's the plan. Um, and uh, then, obviously, when it's all um, uh, put together, um, I will be uh, masking my windows. Um, I'll be masking them with uh, the great Lou Del Meso's um, uh, masking kit and clear parts uh, masks. Uh, they're on their way. Um, and so that's how I'll be uh, finishing mine. And that will allow me to close everything up take care of the seams, get it all ready for final paint, uh, and then paint it. And then obviously when that's done, um, I can turn it over like a tripod and uh, I can work on the decals after it's gotten uh, a couple of good coats of, of varnish um, to, to seal it all in. And so, uh, you know, lots to do obviously, but uh, I have a plan. And I have a plan because of all those great videos. And that is why I wanted to do this uh, video. Because I wanted to remind all of us that it, it, it should take some of the stress out of it for those of us who um, were never really excited about tackling those seams or never really excited about tackling these windows. Um, and there's 
there's certainly plenty of uh, uh, other ways to do this. I, you know, you, you can take uh, some crystal, micro crystal clear or some canopy glow in a syringe and you can drop it into these windows if you don't want to use the clear parts, but I'm not going to be doing that. And, uh, uh, but anyway, um, so that's, that's what's going on. Um, and I'm pretty excited about that. Now, uh, the only other thing I wanted to share with you on this update is I have, uh, finished, uh, the, uh, hangar bay. This is a 3d printed part from Shapeways, um, with, um, uh, paragraphics, uh, on the, uh, the windows. Uh, this 3D printed part, as you can see, has uh, crisp grid lines at the top. It had crisp windows in the sides. Uh, it had a, a lovely indentation here for, uh, for, for you to have lights. Um, I have put the shadow box uh, figures in uh, there, you can see, and that looks really good. So I'm excited about that. Um, and I'm also excited about the fact that this is a lot thinner because as we all know, there's a little bit of grinding that has to be done um, on the back here. And um, what, what, what inevitably happens is, is you've got to start chunking out all of this plastic uh, to allow that, uh, that kit part uh, to, to sit in there. But you don't have to do that uh, with this. Um, uh, uh, you can see it not only it not only sits in there nicely, but um, I can tell you categorically that the um, the amount of uh, distance you you get uh, between the uh, the walls of this hangar bay piece um, and here they give you you know maybe a millimeter of of, of extra room, so you're not shoving those wires in there. Uh, now I got to be super careful because even though this thing is highly detailed, it is incredibly fragile and um, I've got to just be really careful about not breaking it. That's one of the the sort of the pros and cons of, of going this route guys is that you get super detail but with super detail comes um, a, 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 a thin, a wafer thin part. So you gotta be extra careful. Um, I did the same thing with uh, the bridge. Here's the bridge. And uh, this also is a 3D part from Shapeways. Uh, not terribly expensive. I, I think I paid about 14 or $15 for it. There's several versions of it. Now, um, what, what, what it does not come with is the uh, clips. You can see on the uh, kit part. Uh, that you uh, attach your LEDs to. But uh, a little bit of um, hot glue and uh, you'll be able to um, put your, uh, your lights where you need them. But the genius about this was, was that every single uh, computer board and uh, every single part uh, had, had all of its windows cut out. So when I attached uh, my paragraphics uh, uh, control surface uh, photo etch to this. Uh, it, it just went down like a dream and uh, I was able to connect the two up and then I put um, my Tamiya clears, reds, blues, greens and yellows into the various surfaces. Um, I've used blue on the screens uh, there. You can see one of the screens lighting up quite nicely and I've used um, uh, various uh, other colors on the control boards. Uh, the screen uh, lights up quite nicely there. Uh, excuse my lens flare, I don't know how else to do that. Um, and you can also see that my railings are, are really nicely detailed. You do not need to use the paragraphics uh, rails with this. Um, you can actually uh, simply uh, just paint the whole thing black uh, then get, you, you know, the tricky part is getting your floor colors down, your grays down and your lighter grays on the screens on the side. That's a little tricky, uh, but very doable. Uh, a little, a little bit of red, obviously for the, um, uh, for the elevator. 
uh, and I put a little bit of brown on the arms of the chair. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's a tremendous amount of detail. And once that is under the dome and lit nicely, um, that, that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice piece to have that uh, you're just way too far away for that. There, that's better. Um, so let me just hit this with some light once again. And there, there it is. There it is. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm really happy with that. I think that that that's gonna um, that that's gonna make a huge difference. So, and then the only other thing I've done, obviously, is I've given um, the deck a, uh, a couple of uh, coats of the light gray, and then I've glassed it sufficiently, and I put the landing pad um, uh, mark uh, marker down, and and uh, that that is beautifully sealed, not going anywhere, and is going to look terrific. Now, the only other piece that I've ordered is uh, a shuttle uh, a shuttlecraft. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now, the reason why I uh, I did that is because here's the one that comes with the kit, and it's good. You know, it's good. I mean, it comes with decals. Uh, it's hollow in the back there, so you could put a, uh, a Pico SMND in there and, uh, you know, get yourself, drill, drill out a little hole in the front here so that you've, you can see, uh, you know, you've got a window in there, and that would be great. And it, it's perfectly serviceable. But uh, what I found on Shapeways, and I've bought a couple of them, uh, was uh, 3D printed uh, Galileo uh, shuttlecraft, right? And... But all the windows are in them, and the detail is terrific. And it even has its little uh, rear landing uh, um, uh, piece. Can you believe that? So I thought to myself, that's worth putting an SMD in and uh, getting that um, lit up on the uh, uh, on the shuttle uh, bay floor. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll run run one over there. Uh, because the beautiful thing about those uh, Pico lights, you know, uh, and I get mine from Evans Design, is they've already, uh, they're pre-resisted, um, so you don't have to worry about that. They've got micro-thin wire attached to them, so you can get them into very tight places, and boy, do they do a great job. So that's the only other 3D printed part that I'm using. Um, everything else is, is kind of from the kit. Uh, but again, you know, using all the different various techniques and uh, ideas that, that uh, we've come uh, to know along the way. Um, I did want to show you uh, this because one of the things that I uh, have noticed is that, you know, it, 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 it looks kind of uh, over the top when they put the black lines in the, the hangar door. But, um, but I think that um, the one thing you realize here is that, you know, this was hand built. It wasn't molded from anything. They, this came out of somebody's head. Uh, it had to be designed, obviously. And, um, you know, that's what you get. Um, so, um, but, but wow, uh, to have that as a frame of reference is absolutely terrific. So that's what I'm doing. So the next time we get together for an update, um, I'm going to be um, obviously primed um, and I'm going to be uh, thick into the uh, lighting. We'll, we'll do some test lighting and um, starting to look at this thing. It should be coming together. Uh, it, it should be really coming together. Uh, wow, I have to tell you guys, I'm having a blast doing this. And for some reason, I don't feel stressed out about it. Whereas I did years ago when I opened this box and thought, how, you know, in God's name, am I going to do this? But uh, prep, 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 prep. And, you know, the three skills that you're going to desperately need is obviously uh, getting your seam lines done correctly. So taking the time for that making sure that you've got good coats of primer down and they're well sanded between coats. And then obviously when you put your uh, two, two coats, uh, some people use three down of the, the final color, that those get the proper light sandings, 
you know, um, 800, 1,000 grit between, uh, between coats, and you'll, ju you'll just get a beautiful surface. And then when it comes to you, obviously, putting your, 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 your clear coat on that uh, for your decals is you're just going to have a beautiful surface. And it's going to be nice and hard. you gotta let, you got to let it dry. You know, you got to give it several days uh, between coats. Really let it dry. Uh, don't be in a rush because when you're in a rush, that's when stupid mistakes happen. Believe me, I've done them all. Uh, you can think your paint is dry after a day or two and it isn't. And you handle it incorrectly and you'll get fingerprint marks in your paint. You don't want that. So patience, patience, patience. You're going to have an awesome model. And wow, what a great model to have in the collection. I'm really excited we're doing this. Um, and then obviously at some point, maybe later in this year or next year, we'll tackle the, uh, the, the refit, the A. <laughs> That one um, is, is, is gnarly. It's gnarly. Um, but uh, a lot of fun, and um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be doing it. And, um, you know, uh, once in a while uh, when I get asked uh, to do commission work, and I do once in a while depending on what it is, um, I'm always keen to make sure that I've studied everything, um, not, not just frame grabs, but any other uh, advice that I can get so that it makes my life easier and, um, you know, whoever you're building this for uh, would get a tremendous amount of joy out of it as well. So uh, thank you for checking me out. Uh, you can certainly follow along with the daily post that I do on Instagram uh, at Spruverse. And uh, please like and subscribe here and follow along with these builds. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, I wish all of you, please be well, be safe, build something, and I'll see you on the next update. So take care, everybody.